Good morning and welcome back. The issue with this unit, 373 hours. This is an SC500, as you saw in the early part of the video. Uh, it's water lift, or what people call suction. So what I'm gonna do is um, kind of look at a few things that have to do with water lift, and particularly the gasket that goes along here which is in decent shape. I just recently replaced the batteries. And here, that's when they said things started happening. Uh, well, we gave them the gift of batteries, which they paid for. So there, see the, the date code there from this year. So I was here probably a couple months ago. Um, I had to clean up a lot of acid and all that, but that wouldn't affect the water lift. So there's several factors and let's take a listen to the uh, back motor. We'll go ahead and turn that on. And I believe we'll do it like this. Okay. So I lift on the lid to see if we have any suction. Well, we got suction, but let me listen to the motor as it shuts off. That's whisper mode. That's just a lower RPM. So it's doing its, uh, shut down back motors on some machines will allow you to um, pick up the water it'll actually finish running after you lift the deck up it'll stay operational so I'm gonna do it now this way listen from here I'm trying to turn it on quickly not too terribly bad, not too terribly bad. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna turn it back on again and I'm gonna check also if to see if there's any breach in the hose. Um, I wanna take a look in here. There's some debris, but it's to be expected. Um, I'm gonna check. But that's not very good water left from the hose. I feel that there could be a something impeding. So let's take a look and go up and I'll come back. Put the back motor on and I did run a uh, broom handle all the way up to here. So I was able to see the tip of the broom handle, which means this is clear. And I do feel that there is water, there's good suction but it's very, very faint. So I'm gonna take this duct off to see if there's any obstruction and then run it again and get a true sense of um, the back motor. I may have to pull it out just to do an inspection. Here's a look on the inside and you can see that there is some corrosion on the impeller that bolt holds the impeller pieces together, but I can already see what's going on in here. So let's turn it on. It shut itself off, that's why, so. Come on. Oh yeah. Yeah, I really don't need to go into this one. So, what you've gotten into the back motor, I'm going to check the battery pack voltage as I turn on the back motor. Okay, so now I noticed that the RPM is still pretty much the same. Even though I mean, this is normal. Okay, so 
actually, um, we do have a big problem here. As soon as I took the cover off, the whole vac motor assembly actually fell off and fell down. It's actually secured by those screws through these screw holes. So chemical exposure has gotten to this and look at the exhaust is full of debris. So all that debris got into these impeller blades. That's not just one set, there's several sets in there. And um, yeah, it's just seen a little bit of abuse and um, seeing that the water levels may have gotten a little too high and that's why it's important, even though you have a, a, a scrubber, an auto scrubber, it's a good idea to treat it like a carpet extractor. As soon as you're done running the unit, run the vac motor by itself for one to two minutes as you clean up and that'll get all the moisture out of these exhaust ports here. And it drains down. Literally, there should the way this is designed, there should be minimal, but for some reason, this has just uh, been exposed for so long. So one of the other ideas that I do mention is to keep the lid open so things can dry best they can, especially in here. So I'm gonna let the customer know that we had a little bit of an event here that um, uh, just, we just need to uh, replace this and we'll get the RPMs back up where they should. Um, with the new vac motor.